Good day grade 12s and welcome to lesson number 85 from the Distinction Bound Student Economics Grade 12 book, written by Cardin Madzokir. He always complains about how I pronounce his surname. I'm trying my best. My name is Viola from the The Distinction Bound Student. I'm excited about today's lesson because it's a possible essay. Let's dive into the lesson right away. We will start by doing revision on the homework that I gave you in lesson 84 linked down below. We urge you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out. Also turn on the notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload a video. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all our current subscribers. You guys have made it possible for us to continue making videos. We really appreciate. Back to the homework. We only had one question for you. It said, discuss competition as a South African approach to supply-side policy. 8 marks. Okay, for a question like this, make sure your answer has at least 4 points because we award 2 marks per point, so 4 times 2 gives you 8 marks. Point number 1, the promotion of greater competition serves as an incentive for new businesses to enter the market. Take note of the word incentive. Clearly from this point you can see why increasing competition is a supply-side policy. It is because the entrance of new businesses into any market will shift the supply curve to the right. That's why we call it a supply-side policy because it causing a shift to the supply curve. Point number two, since 1994, many barriers to international trade have been lifted, which has led to a significant increase in competition. Again, I'm sure you can see why we call it supply-side policy. Third point, the Competition Act of 1998 is aimed at limiting the number of monopolies formed and reducing or eliminating the power of monopolies. Last but not least, the Act led to the establishment of the Competition Commission, the Competition Tribunal and the Competition Appeal Court. We all know that these three bodies do not play. The Competition Tribunal once fined SMEG 100,000 rands for appliance price fixing. They also blocked Standard Bank in a collusion case over the rand dollar currencies trade. ABSA and Citibank admitted guilt from which Citibank was fined 70 million rands. I'm not sure how much ABSA was fined. I can give you more examples but let's move on with our lesson. Let's get into lesson 85, which is unit 3 of our topic, economic growth and development. The topic is, the demand side approach to growth and development. I think I mentioned it already that today's lesson is an essay type question. We will start with demand factors. The phrase demand side approach to growth and development is a policy that focuses on the aggregate demand created by households, businesses, the government and the foreign sector and how to use this demand as an important driving force in growing the economy. It focuses on expanding the aggregate demand for goods and services produced in the economy. There should be adequate and growing demand for goods and services produced in the economy. Now how can a demand side policy be used to stimulate growth? Well, a demand-side approach includes changes in monetary and fiscal policies with the aim of increasing the level of aggregate demand. The monetary policy is executed by the South African Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee, led by Governor Lesetjik Ganyaho. I think I pronounce Cardin's surname better. Maybe I'm getting used to it and I'm always corrected when I say it wrong, which is basically, always. The committee aims to stabilize prices by keeping inflation within 3-6%. Take not, we usually say the MPC instead of saying the committee. Please don't confuse it with marginal propensity to consume. We always write MPC for marginal propensity to consume in small letters and MPC for monetary policy committee in capital letters. Moving on, the fiscal policy on the other hand is executed by the National Treasury or Ministry of Finance, led by the finance minister Enoch Godongwana. I almost said Tito Mbawini. Well, it's because Enoch was only appointed in August 2021. I guess we are not used to him yet. He has only presented one budget speech and one medium-term budget policy statement. Anyways, a demand-side approach to economic growth and development does not only depend on fiscal and monetary policy. It is dependent on all components of aggregate demand, that is C, G, I and X. You better know what this is otherwise I won't be happy. In case you don't know, C is consumption spending by households, G is government spending, I is investment spending and X is your X. Just kidding, X stands for exports. Now let's go deeper with the two policies. I'll start with the monetary policy. How do you think the Reserve Bank can stimulate demand? Can the Reserve Bank influence you to buy something? Well, let's find out. The South African Reserve Bank, 
better known as the SARB as the central bank in South Africa executes the monetary policy. They use the following instruments. Interest rates, open market transactions and moral suasion. Let's start with the most common of the three instruments. Obviously I'm referring to interest rates. The Reserve Bank makes adjustments to interest rates to influence credit creation by making credit more expensive or cheaper. Remember my question when I asked if you think the Reserve Bank can influence you to make a purchase? Well, the answer is yes. When interest rates are high, we become hesitant to buy on credit. Conversely, when interest rates are low, more people will be encouraged to buy houses, cars, clothes and more on credit. Common sense right? The next instrument is open market transactions. I think the phrase is self-explanatory. To restrict credit, the SARB sells securities. In case you are wondering what securities are, they are financial instruments that hold value and can be traded between two parties. Examples include shares, debt and equity. When commercial banks such as FNB, Capitec, Nedbank buy these securities, money flows from those banks to the reserve bank. The banks will then have less money to lend and cannot extend as much credit as before. To encourage credit creation, the reserve bank buys securities. That way, money flows into the banking system. The last instrument used by the SARB is moral suasion. Moral suasion is an appeal to morality in order to influence or change behavior. It can also refer to the act of persuading a person or group of people to act in a certain way through rhetorical appeals, persuasion, or implicit and explicit threats. The Reserve Bank consults with banks to act in a responsible manner on the prevailing economic conditions. Banks are required to hold a certain minimum cash reserve in the central bank. Now, let's drive less than 2 kilometers from 370 Helen Joseph Street Pretoria Central to 240 Madiba Street Pretoria Central. Those in Pretoria know that's U.S. driving from the Reserve Bank to National Treasury. Fiscal and monetary policies are implemented less than 2 kilometers apart. Let's now look at the fiscal policy. South Africa's fiscal policy is put into practice through the budgetary process. The main purpose of the fiscal policy is to stimulate macroeconomic growth, employment, and redistribution of wealth. The following instruments are used. Progressive personal income tax system, wealth taxes, cash benefits, benefits in kind, land restitution, land redistribution, and lastly subsidies on properties. Let's look at our list one by one. I'll start with progressive personal income tax. South Africa uses this system as a redress measure. I'm saying redress because an imbalance was created during apartheid. Remember redress means correcting imbalances from the past. A progressive tax system is used to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. It is done by charging high-income earners more tax than low-income earners. These taxes are used to finance social development. The poor benefit more than those with higher incomes and that helps to bridge the gap between the two. Do you agree with the fact that the poor will benefit? We would like to hear your input on this one. Please don't hesitate to drop a comment. The second instrument is wealth tax. You will be surprised though on this one since we are talking about the stimulation of demand, in other words, causing a shift of the demand curve to the right. However, in conclusion, I'll clarify. Properties are taxed according to their market values. So obviously on this one, the more expensive your property is, the more you will pay in tax. Transfer duties are paid when properties are bought. Securities, for example shares and bonds are taxed when traded. Estate duties are paid on the estates of the deceased. These taxes are used to finance development expenditures which benefit the poor more often. That way, if the money collected is then spent on development, demand is stimulated during that expenditure. The confusion you had in the beginning was that tax is a leakage so how does tax stimulate demand? Well, I guess you are answered by the part that says, that tax is then used to finance development expenditure. The next instrument is a common one, and it's called, cash benefits. Examples include old age pension, disability grant, child support grant, unemployment insurance and many other cash benefits. These are known as social security payments. The next instrument is benefits in kind. These include the provision of health care, education, school meals, protection and so on free of charge. When money is charged for certain goods, a benefit in kind would be that poor or low-income earners pay less or nothing. Limited quantity of free electricity and water can also be examples of benefits in kind. Let's say you need to buy electricity. 
Due to your address, the system picks up that you are a low-income earner. It then charges you, let's say 50 rand for 100 units of electricity and 20 units for free. That way, you got 20 units for free. You wouldn't have gotten this free electricity if you had not made the purchase. That same 50 rands would buy maybe 30 units in a different area where high-income earners stay. We have two more instruments to discuss. I'll start with land redistribution and land restitution. Obviously you are waiting for the difference between the two. Land restitution is the return of land to those that have lost it due to discriminatory laws in the past. Land redistribution on the other hand focuses on land for residential and production for previously disadvantaged groups. Let me give an example that can help you understand the difference even more. Aiden owned land in 1984 and he lost his land during apartheid. Him getting his land back is land restitution. On the other hand, Jaden is black and he has never owned land. He then gets land from the government through their one of their programs. In this case, the program is land redistribution because land has been given to Jaden who is regarded as a previously disadvantaged individual on the premise that he is black. Last but not least, we will look at subsidies on property. This instrument helps people to acquire ownership of fixed residential properties. For example, government's housing subsidy scheme provides funding to all people earning less than 3,500 rands per month. This brings us to the end of our lesson. As usual, I have homework for you. Number 1. Define the concept progressive income tax system. 2 marks. Number 2. Why does the South African government use this tax system? 2 marks. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.